Moreover, Jehi thought to use it on Elder, as Mesquite is already strong. However, she is confused now with the bunch of thoughts, so she just opened the cage and let the butterfly select its honeymate. As expected, the butterfly went to Mesquite, but soon the expectations turned out to be wrong when the butterfly went close to Daisy, as she is more developed now, but Elder is the higher guard, and the butterfly sat on his shoulder, showing that the butterfly had selected him as the honeymate. Jehi becomes surprised to know that, as the man had lied to her and told her that he was going to the 17th terrarium. Cannabis tells them that she is staying at the academy in 18th terrarium, and she got kidnapped when the academy was attacked, but she got kidnapped again while she was being transported. March was the man who intended to kidnap Cannabis, and when he got attacked, he used Jehi Bokeh for the sake of kidnapping by pretending to be the master of Cannabis. Jehi was lucky that thugs underestimated monkshood, and she thanked her for her amazing performance. All monkshood needs to learn now is to control her power without the need for suppressants. Subsequently, Jehi asked Cannabis to take her back to her druid named March, whom they met on the way, but she told her that her master is either a man nor her name is March. Additionally, the man mentioned that there is a main crew, so Jehi has no idea how many there are in numbers and they were lucky because last time there were no dryads that were immune to poison. Jehi is concerned because she has endless diamonds, so she is thinking of the best way to escape. She stares at Elder and through her thoughts, tells him to use his lucky buff on her. Elder understood, and Jehi asked them if they should pay right now. Jehi asked curiously to Mesquite why the butterfly skipped her while, when it comes to grade, Mesquite had the highest. She explains that the butterfly will get nothing, as she is the only mother plant from which it can receive energy. Jehi is surprised to know that there are no wild velvet mesquites in this world, and she has the one and only most powerful dryad. But the wounds don't look like they were sustained because of the fall and seem more like a battle. Jehi asked Elder if he could heal him, but he can only use it on dryads, and it's even more difficult because his soul is not connected to him as Jehi. She told him to do whatever he could, as they couldn't leave him in such a condition. The person speaks out in pain, asking for help, and Jehi replies that she is coming, but he has to stay still as her dryads are very sensitive to her master's safety. The person wearing a white gown seems more like a doctor or a lab worker. All plants are born and raised on the land blessed by the world tree, and they must learn the rules of nature. It can be seen as the society of dryads where they learn the rules as they are born. Additionally, if the dryad-like monkshood increase in number, then they will continue to attack the druids, while real dryad will never hurt druids. Elder is a powerful healer, and even if he can't resist this monkshood poison, so how will their healer if they have any? The paralysis spell they used on Elder doesn't even work on monkshood, as no poison works on her as she herself is a strong poison. This underscores the resilience of monkshood. Jehi Bokeh is not affected by monkshood, as their souls are connected to her. Mesquite lifts Jehi, and she doesn't have the courage to look at Mesquite. She tells her that she is completely fine. The manager suggests Jehi, if she has already selected a dryad as the honeymate of the butterfly, return all the dryads except the selected one because the butterfly will fly to the one with the strongest scent. Subsequently, Jehi understood that the butterfly will go to the mesquite as she is the strongest one, and if there is a mesquite forest, then she will become more stronger. Jehi wanted to use it on daisy, but she knows that finding daisies is easy to do and doesn't even require a butterfly. Elder and mesquite intentions fall like lightning strikes on Jehi because they are intended to kill the monkshood, while he does not agree with them. Although artificial enhancement is common on earth, but in this world, it's a forbidden act. Jehi is having a bad feeling seeing it, as it is the same alarm that she received from Scarecrow for help. Elder asked about it, and Jehi said that someone was calling them for help. Mesky didn't sense any blaze nearby, and she is wondering what else other than blaze can harm the druid. Meanwhile, a young man came there, saying that he came for help because someone had filed a report. Jehi remembered that the man named March said he was going to file a report at the 17th terrarium, but the man was saying that he would guide them to the 18th terrarium. The young man says that he will bring cannabis with himself, and asks how they rescued her. 
Elder told them that they had secretly escaped with her, and the thugs must be finding them. The man asked for the hideout and told his mates to go check out the area, and he would bring cannabis with him and join the main crew. Furthermore, Elder suggests killing monkshood as it would be the same as what the world tree wants, and Mesquite says that as the monkshood is returned to the world tree, new information will be registered about it. At the same time, she got an alert on her phone showing that her artifact is connecting to the artifact network named March, and another notification showed that the nearby artifact network emergency rescue mode had been activated and the connection had been prioritized. It sounds pretty good to be the first grade 4 gardener, but she already owns the whole 28th terrarium, and there is another thing she is concerned about, the butterfly, which is the quest completion reward. The manager asked for a moment, and another man came with the butterfly closed in a cage. The wings of the butterfly are golden and sparkling, which seems beautiful. Jay he asked if the thugs had, but before the thugs understood something, she removed the sup present from the monk's hood cover and used her poison. Consequently, the surroundings fill with purple butterflies, and they spread the poison. The butterflies attack the thugs, and their eyes turn purple. As they get affected, they start falling. The redhead wants to stop Monkshood, but it's too late as he got affected. Seedling and his bouquet must be in the 16th terrarium. It felt like some cosmic joke, a twist of fate. They never imagined there would come a day when they had to go to a terrarium where Seedling was residing. Jehe swore that she would never see them again, but now it seems there is a probability of meeting them again. In conclusion, it's a relief for Jehe that she didn't remember, and she steps up to take a look at the carriage, as there is a chance that she will find more clues regarding the incident that happened in the 28th terrarium. Daisy lifts the wood pieces aside, and Monkshood stares in the same direction. Jehe also doesn't want to run into any trouble, and she asked Monkshood if she remembered anything about it, but luckily she didn't know anything that happened. All she knows is that she was carried somewhere and on the way she met something extremely hot because she didn't retain all the memories. Now that they thought about it, it seemed like a great idea. Furthermore, they have more places to go now. They remembered someone mentioning that the Alchemy Tower was in the 16th Terrarium. In addition, since they were already heading to the 18th Terrarium, they figured they could visit it along the way. Furthermore, they reached the place where they battled with the carriage blaze. Daisy signals towards the destroyed carriage lying on the ground. Jehe is concerned if it is fine for Monkshood to see the carriage, as it is the place where other Monkshood were burned by the blaze. Jehe is able to see all the information regarding Monkshood on her phone as the marble slab of the greenhouse, while all call it a wallet, but it is no other than a regular smartphone. Moreover, Alpine Monkshood is similar to its mother plant but not exactly the same. Jehe is unable to access some information, which is bothering her. Hearing that, Mesquite suggests to Jehe that they should visit the Alchemy Tower where the Alpine Monkshood was born, as they might have all the information regarding this seedling. Additionally, Mesquite also suggests checking whether artificial improvements are common there or if the Alchemy Tower is doing it hiddenly, as what they did is illegal and they have to pay for it. However, Elder suggests cleaning it up as it would be better if they were the only ones who knew about the secret events that took place in the 28th terrarium. Additionally, Mesquite also agrees with them, as it's a question of Jehe's safety. Moreover, others will easily get clues from it as Jehe deduces through it. She is an improved version of Monkhood, so she shares similar features, which provides a high probability that she will receive a bonus in the month of September. She can be poison as well as medicine, depending on the situation she is in. The flower has various names other than Monkshood, plus there are many mysterious stories and further information, but Jehe can't access it now. Jehe didn't say anything about that because she knows that the Dryads believe the world tree will never collapse, because of which she hesitated to speak. That's all, assuming that the Dryads would be mad on her for speaking such nonsense. But when she realized something at the moment, when she accepted monkshood to the bouquet that the thing that is more important than the world tree for her dryads is their master, a small world tree. Jehe put the staff back on her hood, and she stopped crying, but when she asked her the reason for crying, 
she said that she was reminded of the moment when she was alone. On the contrary, Elda says it's about the affection level, as her properties changed when she connected her soul to monkhood, so she feels secure now, but her other part still feels that she is alone. Jaehee is wondering what the term, turnover form, means. The monk's hood dryad is looking like a healer for now, and she started looking for a way through which her mode could be switched. However, Jaehee found the staff inserted in her hood, which might be the reason why she changed into a healer. As she removed the staff from her hood, she burst with tears and started crying loudly, which shattered Jaehee's eardrums. In contrast, Jaehee came to the conclusion based on the details that were written in the diary of the previous administrator that someone intendedly isolated the 28th terrarium in order to kill the world tree, while the world tree that was all believed to be the most powerful was affected by mere bugs. Jaehee puts the berry in her hand, thinking that she should believe in herself, and she is sure that her soul is big enough for monkshood to let her plant the roots. A flash covered her up, and Jaehee got an alert on her phone. The screen is showing her details of the Alpine monkshood, that her nickname is the Queen of the Poison. The field raid is none as it's man-made, which means she can't make a forest, her characteristics are offensive, and the grade is unknown but estimated to be higher than unique. Elder also says she is a troublesome one, and they can't do anything now because Jaehee has already connected her soul to her. Jaehee has to take baby steps with her, and the distance will be reduced as she develops. Therefore, Jaehee sees the affection level as her new tough assignment, which she has to overcome. It's Jaehee, in which her dryads have blind faith. Mesquite and Elder agree with the conclusion, and he asked why she hadn't told them before. Daisy is worried that her master will be in more danger, as all of Jaehee's dryads are worried for her rather than anything else. Nevertheless, Jaehee is feeling embarrassed, but Mesquite apologizes to her, as she didn't understand her concern before. They promise to not keep anything secret from now on with each other. The sun is up, and it's a bright, warm day. Jaehee is seeing the map for the fastest way to reach the 26th terrarium, and they have to make their way across the mountains before the day ends. They have gone across the mountains before, so it will be the easiest and fastest route for them, as they are aware of it. It is the cutest assignment Jaehee has ever gotten. In conclusion, Mesquite asks Jaehee if she checked whatever she wanted to, but as of now, Monk's Hood is her dryad, so the problem is solved as, because of her, there will be no one who will be able to cross the- Jaehee asked the man if they should pay now, as she suspected that they came for that. Moreover, Jaehee told him to cut the act short as there was no one around them. Furthermore, Jaehee told him the plan was to give an excuse and come to her, as she gave the signal to him. The man came to her, and subsequently, Jaehee told him that she had already made the down payment, and that she was supposed to make the second payment when the cannabis was stolen. Afterwards, she should have arrived at the 18th terrarium with cannabis, and she asked him at which point she would make the final payment for being provided with a safe place to hide. Jaehee seems to be on the right path, but on the other hand, will the man assume that there is a spy within the organization? Nevertheless, Jaehee is sure that he will fall for her trap when she offers him a huge sum of diamonds, regardless of whatever he is thinking. Jaehee laid his trap and told him that she was going to run after she killed the master of cannabis. But these people found them first, resulting in an unexpected situation. Consequently, they needed to make a new agreement, and she asked whatever the down payment was. Jaehee has no idea about the amount it costs for such things so she just went with the flow as things were going. He said 100 diamonds, and she got the thought to add a zero to that amount. She asked if it was 1,000 diamonds, and as expected, the man said yes, it was 1,000 diamonds. Recognizing this, Jaehee got that the man is sold now but still second, and the final payment is left to discuss. She told him that the second payment was supposed to be doubled, so it would be 2,000 diamonds. Elder got trembled hearing 2,000 diamonds. The man is convinced now. However, Jaehee is taking every step carefully to ensure she will not seem suspicious, as she has doubts that if she trusts him to pay a large amount easily, she will look so. She asked him in low pitch if he was her guy, as something seemed off. To trap him well and to ensure he is her guy, 
she told him it's a 10,000 diamond deal. Therefore, how can he forget the down payment? Upon hearing 10,000 diamonds, he assures her that he is her guy, especially since he came alone. Jay he asked him the secret code while there is nothing like that, but she made one and asked him what's the third month. He said, March, and she confirmed to him that it's her guy. No matter what, whatever he is going to say, Jay he will say yes for sure, as she is laying a trap for him to hook up, and she can easily come out of this danger. The man murmured something about March, and Jay he is thinking of the possibilities she can do, such as she can also cause internal conflict which will fall on the fake doctor who deceived Jaehee earlier from where that's all started. Jaehee confirmed him as her guy and was ready to pay him money through transfer while pretending that she had paid in physical diamonds last time for the down payment, so it seems true while it's not. Jaehee intentionally told him a larger amount for the final payment, so that he would stay trapped and not try to run after she gave him 2,000 diamonds. With this plan, he will take her to the 18th terrarium to receive the final payment, and she has doubts. At the end, when he receives the payment, he can do anything to her, but she has powerful dryads so it's not of concern. Additionally, Jaehee knows that no one can just take out diamonds from her wallet until she wants. Her artifact network connected to his network, and she got to know his name was Kaylin. She told him to hurry up, as her boss is an impatient person and there will be no second deal if the first one doesn't go on in the right manner. Jaehee seems like a professional dealer at this point. She told him they were providing 10,000 diamonds because he asked for more in order to run away after the completion of this task, and she told him to lie low until he received their next instructions. They left the place in a hurry before the others arrived there. In the meantime, Jaehee is able to see the castle walls between the shining trees, which must be the 18th terrarium. Kaylin told her it's a place where they plan to meet up with the main crew, and Jaehee asked what she should do. Kaylin suggested that she hide for a while, and there is a dryad in his crew who has exceptional detection abilities, so he told her to return all of her dryads to the terrarium artifact as they have powerful auras that can be detected easily. Elder is surprised to hear that, and Jaehee is also concerned, as it's a bit risky and she wants protection. Kaylin will pretend that cannabis is his dryad, but Jaehee's dryads are powerful, so it will be risky to show them to the crew. Finally, Jaehee accepts to return her dryads to the artifact, but Elder is not satisfied, though Jaehee speaks to him through thoughts to go with the flow and believe in the power of money. Mesquite told Jaehee to not worry, as if things went wrong, they would come out straight. Jaehee hid behind the rock, and Kaylin went to his crew and told them a fake theory. He told his crew that March is a traitor, there is another organization, and he needs help as his crew got attacked, and he doubts if they got far. He pretended that he lost so much strength in the battle, so he was going to report to the boss whatever happened. Jay he was afraid that he was going to backstab her at this point. Kaylin gives a signal to Jay he by nodding, and he tells her that they will find very soon that he lied as the ones who came back and those who ran off will soon find that there is something fishy. Therefore, they need to take action before they are caught. They reached the 18th terrarium, where the castle was shining in the sunlight. Kaylin covered cannabis to disguise her and suggested Jaehee not go to the upper part of the terrarium as there will be more guards because of the attack that happened today. Jaehee is thinking that's the direction in which she must go. Kaylin told her away to a building that was empty for so long and suggested she go inside and leave through the back door, then go around the row of shops, where she will find an inn where she can stay for three to four days to avoid being detected. He also told her that if she leaves the terrarium too soon, she might get caught. Jaehee thanks him and pretends that she can take care of the things from here as someone is coming to get her. Jaehee said she will transfer the final payment to him and butter him saying he is quite competent. Thus, she will put him on good terms with her boss. She told him that they needed to change their communication method further because the previous way was too risky. Kaylin got his final payment and thanked her. Following this, he asked her how she would contact him, and she told him that he was in for the next 10,000 diamond jobs. Even though, Jaehee has no idea what she is talking about, so she is hoping he will speak another way. 
Kaylin asked her if she meant a hornet. Jehi knows that dryads keep butterflies as their pets so that they can navigate, but she is not sure how a hornet will work. He said that he would prepare a hornet's nest in her wallet, while Jehi wonders what hornet's nest means. He told her to send him one from the pair by midnight, and as he put himself in grave danger, it's better for him to leave now. Kaylin takes his leave. Mesquite came out of the artifact with a flash and asked Jehi what her plan was, as she was in a compromising situation now. Jehi said she must meet the administrator of the 18th terrarium so that she can complete her goal of coming here, which is to remove her temporary tag of administrator. Additionally, Jehi also needs to return cannabis to her owner. Jehi went inside the orchard, which seems bigger and better in comparison to the one in the 26th terrarium. The receptionist welcomed her, and she told her that she came to meet the administrator, but she responded that the administrator was not taking any official appointments today. The receptionist suggests she take a number if she comes to file a complaint. Jehi is feeling the difference in the reception compared to how she was treated at the 26th terrarium. She told the receptionist to let the administrator know at least that the temporary administrator of the 28th terrarium came here to discuss some matters. Upon hearing that, the receptionist trembled and told her that, in this case, she would take her to the administrator right away. As they moved to meet the administrator, she saw the stairs shining golden, which seemed profligate. Before they entered, a lady told her in a disciplined way that cannabis has to wait outside because she is not linked to Jehi Soul, but she told her to tell the administrator that she has cannabis with her. The administrator allowed them to come in and Jehi's eyes fell on the man sitting in the middle, which must be the administrator, and other people besides him might be the board of directors or something. The administrator apologized for his unpleasant actions and asked her about cannabis. The administrator told her that they delayed her arrest because they confirmed her identity, and she'd be in jail if they weren't able to confirm her identity. Jehi is impressed by the administrator that he is to the point, avoiding unnecessary things. Jehi told the administrator that she rescued the cannabis, and she requested that he find the cannabis owner without wasting time on the reward or something. She also told him that she is in a tricky situation, and there are many who are after cannabis outside. The lady who was at the door excused Jehi and held her hand while Jehi was wondering what she was doing. She told the administrator that it's not here, and the administrator murmured that it would be visible if she were a junior. But she can't be high because she was able to enter the administrator's monitoring network while Jehi is unaware of it. The administrator apologized to Jehi, and he told her that he would send the guards outside of the terrarium and contact the druid, who owns cannabis. The owner is not conscious yet, but she will recover soon. The administrator shows his gratitude on behalf of the academy and the medical association and he apologizes once again for the abruptness he showed due to the recent attack and tells her that their terrarium will provide her with a generous reward as she rescued cannabis. No one mind reward, but for Jehi, it's not the matter as there is another issue for her right now, which is the temporary tag, and she asked the administrator to assist her on the process as she wanted to remove the temporary status of administrator. The administrator told her the process by which the 28th terrarium will enter the auction, where individuals and organizations from other terrariums can bid if they wish to become the administrator of the 28th terrarium. Jehi was assuming that she was the owner and that she needed to report to the 18th terrarium to become the permanent administrator, but things turned out to be different as the 28th terrarium will go for auction as of now. Jehi's dreams seemed to be broken now as she was imagining the look of the 28th terrarium with the mall, hospital, and everything, and she thought it would be no more than signing some papers to be the permanent administrator. Moreover, the administrator also told her that the people here are also to bid in the auction for the 28th terrarium. In light of this, Jehi sees things as a challenge so that she will not lose her terrarium, whatever it costs her. The price of the bid will start from the amount Jehi paid to take over the 28th terrarium, and the final selling price will be given to Jehi with the deduction of a commission fee that will go to the 18th terrarium account as it is taking care of the event. According to the administrator, it will be a win-win situation for both parties if Jehi sells the terrarium to one of the individuals who are sitting there. But she doesn't want to sell, 
and she intended to buy her terrarium herself. One of the individuals told them that, according to the late administrator of the 28th terrarium, the branch of the world tree is severely damaged, that it couldn't produce berries in the last years, and that the recovery process will take a lot of time and money. It appears that she using a clever trick to demotivate others from buying the 28th terrarium. The administrator told them about the 28th terrarium in good words in response to that lady. He told them that it is one of the 20th terrariums, which is a great advantage. Plus, it's a place where imperishable diamonds were produced, but it was in the past. Additionally, visitors will come again because neighboring terrariums are well established. Another one says that according to the reports, the blazes around the 28th terrarium have risen to a dangerous level, due to which it can't be considered an ideal place until skilled druids visit it. To address this, the administrator gives the solution that they can pay skilled druids to visit. Consequently, the terrarium will cost them more money, and hence the terrarium is not worth the money they will put in. Jehi is burning with anger hearing these crazy approaches from them towards her terrarium, as she is putting efforts into it to make it a better place. However, others are just saying whatever they found through reports, but actually they don't have a clear idea about the things that happened in the 28th terrarium. The lady opposed the man, as he was the one who came from the 32nd terrarium. When he heard about the 28th terrarium auction, his administrator always wanted to be a part of the 20th terrarium, and she taunted him, saying that if they really thought they would be able to handle the cost, the man also spoke bitter words in response to hearing that she was the one who sold her gem business to take over the 28th terrarium, and she must be after the imperishable diamonds. They just started to call it a rumor when their true intentions came to light. Jehi is hearing, that's all, and she is being impatient, and tells them to start the bid as she is in a hurry. She asked the administrator what she was supposed to do. The administrator told her that they needed to set the starting bid, while Jehi seems a bit surprised at this point that he doesn't know the price. Nevertheless, he told her that there is no way they can find out about the financial status of the other terrariums, and all they know is that Jehi owns 100% of the 28th terrarium. All beats about the bush, Jehi doesn't seem to have knowledge about investments, she will be a pushover, etc. She is able to hear all of that whispering but it doesn't matter to her. The administrator connects the branch of the 18th terrarium to the branch of the 28th terrarium in order to find out how much Jehi has paid to take over the 28th terrarium. They will be able to find out the starting bid price according to the information that will pass through the branch. Jehi recognizes the USB-shaped branch, which is the same as the one she saw in the orchard of the 28th terrarium. If one wishes to participate in the auction, all they need to do is connect the USB-shaped branch to their wallet. The overall price of the starting bid will go up because the management fees Jehi used at the 26th terrarium will be added to the total cost. The administrator asked Jehi to confirm her participation, as selling her terrarium to get diamonds will be a good deal for her. He also suggests that the individuals will offer more diamonds to the world tree branches and will try their best to win over the branches' hearts. Additionally, the term branches' heart is new to Jehi. The number of starting bids is going up rapidly at this time, around 1, 38, 0, 80. All are staring at the numbers, and their facial expressions are telling us that the amount is going to be ridiculous. The number reaches 4,450,000 and everyone is wondering how high it will go, and how Jehi was able to pay that huge amount from her pocket. The number stops at 8,100,200, and Jehi said that she is going to participate in this auction also, and upon hearing that, everyone just got shocked. Jehi used her imaginary boss again, and told them that there is something she wants to discuss first, and the idea was discussed on the date as she thinks that some of the ideas that were discussed are something that her boss will consider, and she told them that her boss is an extremely wealthy woman, and she has been looking for investors for a while. Jehi said that she can't discuss the ideas right now as she is too busy, and she told them to send their business proposals to them. The administrator also took the bait and told her that he would assist with the process and suggested she use his service, as the commission he was imagining had disappeared now. The auction ended within a few minutes as they saw the amount because there was no competition and never will be.
No one was able to pay that much, as there is only Jehi, the one who is the richest in this world, as her diamonds come effortlessly. The administrator's approach has changed now towards Jehi, and he offered her a VIP in and an assistant, but Jehi said that he would use the in gladly, but she doesn't require an assistant. Jehi has completed all the work, and now she is wondering where she can get more information about the hornet. She asked Mesquite about hornet, but she knows about the honeybees, which druids used as a postal service by utilizing their ability to return their hives regardless of the distance. Jehi's imagination is beyond the level. She is imagining that it's similar to tying a note to a pigeon's leg, but bees are too small to tie letters, as she is comparing the things in her world. Daisy comes out of the artifact and tells her that she knows about hornets, as before she met her, she used the village hall frequently and once she heard the administrator sending something with the hornet. Jehi understood that the druids used the honeybees for postal purposes, while those with administrator status used hornets. Intriguingly, Jehi remembered Red Daisy, who might know about matters related to the administrators, as he was bloomed by the administrator first. She remembered that if she wanted to talk to him, all she needed to do was think and look at the artifact. He asked if she reached the 18th terrarium safely, and not only did she reach it, but she also became the official administrator of the 28th terrarium now. She asked him about the hornets, and she questioned if she knew about the bees and the spider webs, as they're all related to each other. Jehi knows about the bees but not spider webs, and she is imagining a normal web, but he doesn't mean the normal spider web that one can see with normal eyes. The spider web is a tool used to catch bees that are carrying messages. As a result, all the terrariums should have webs that are used to capture messages from the blacklisted druids in the terrarium or to capture the bees with certain features. Concluding that the honeybees are not the best way to communicate. Honeybees are cheap and convenient, as many of them can be used at once as long as there is a hive, but they have the disadvantage that they are weak too. On the contrary, hornets are expensive because they are hard to train, and one must have a pair of male and female to use them. Hornets are used to send important messages because they are strong and can't be caught by the spider webs. But the administrator must use messenger if the message is complicated and important. Bees are good for simple messages. Jehi asked him where she can get hornets, but he has no idea about it because hornets are banned in most of the terrariums, but people use them secretly. She understands now that it's illegal. But what can she do? As she is thinking of the way, a lady appears at the back and asks if she needs the hornets. She told her that she has what Jehi is looking for, but she wonders who she is. She shows Jehi her ID card so she can trust her. The lady's name is Loop, and she is a first-grade researcher working in the alchemy tower of the 18th terrarium. Jehi understands that there is an alchemy tower, but she does not look like a trustworthy person. She said that she has a super hornet on which she is researching, but it's still in the testing stage. She is calling it her best work, as she puts every piece of knowledge about alchemy she has into it. Jehi is not in a mood to wait for her research to be completed. Loop requested that she at least have a look at her hornet at the alchemy tower and give her a chance, as she has a huge debt to pay. Mesquite suggests moving on, as she doesn't seem trustworthy but Jehi wants to see how an alchemy tower looks. Alchemists can make the potions and the dandelion panacea bottles. They reached the alchemy tower, but as the security was tight, Jehi couldn't go in. Lube presented her as her sponsor, but Jehi had to donate it to become the sponsor. There were many plans, but Jehi bought the 2000 diamond one. In this plan, she is allowed to enter any alchemy tower except the restricted ones but she forgot that she has to go along with Loop's story. Loop welcomes Jehi, calling her mentor in her lab, which seems more like a mess. She shows Jehi the hornets kept in a container. Chapter 54 It seems creepy to Jehi using hornets as a messenger. Moreover, these hornets are more powerful than others, and spider webs are nothing to them. Loop has programmed the hornets with the unique characteristic that they can devour bees, but not only bees but even other hornets. By releasing one and extending their delivery period, it will result in the whole colony being destroyed. 
but she is not looking for such hornets as all she wants is to send and receive messages. And that's the reason Alchemy Tower did not approve her research. Luke tells Jehi about another project she is working on but is unable to complete due to a lack of funds. Jehi asked how much she needed, and she said 4,000 diamonds. Jehi shows gratitude and asks if 4,000 diamonds will be sufficient, including her debt. Luke seems emotional and says that with that sum, she can take her family to the 30s terrarium, as the terrarium she belongs to becomes dangerous due to the blaze. She can support her sibling druid with that, as her family depends on her for their needs as she is the breadwinner. Jehi is feeling really bad for her, and she offered to move her family to the 28th terrarium, which is a dream come true for her. Jehi asked about her parents' profession, and she told her that they are jewelers, but that doesn't make them good. Upon hearing that, Jehi offers her 1,000 more diamonds and tells her that there is no tax for the productive workers in her terrarium, but they have to make their home in the terrarium as all things are destroyed. Loop is suspicious of these terms, but when Jehi tells her that she is the administrator, she gets surprised and believes in her. Luke told Jehi that she can even turn the hornet's purpose into infection by adding parasites to it, and then the hornet will infect the bees instead of devouring them. Jehi jumps to Elder and holds him, hearing that. The infected bees will follow and act according to their hornet's purpose, which can be used to change the messages that bees are carrying. It seems like spam mail that infects the computer, but it's better than killing bees. Jehi allowed her to train the hornet with this skill. Loop said that she has to feed the hornets with anything that is not alive and comes from the world tree, including sap, berries, leaves, and bark. Hornet won't eat anything except the program things. Jehi gives the unripe berries to Loop to feed the hornets, as she has stocked them up. Now, Jehi needs to install the beehive in her wallet, which looks like a screen protector. Loop added the parasite to the female, and the male has been infected, so she can use the female to control the purpose of the parasite. The hornets are inserted in her wallet like a chip, while Jehi is afraid of the hornets. Jehi asked Loop about the matter of moving her family, but it can be done with the help of a merchant, as the way is full of dangers from the 59th terrarium. Jehi got the hornets, and she told her to leave. Jehi inserted the male hornet in her wallet, and sent a message to Kaylin saying, This is the one. And the male chip disappeared. Mesquite asked Jehi her next move, but it was to stay here, as Kaylin told them it's dangerous to leave earlier. She decided to visit the artifact workshop as Elder is upset, and they have nothing to do for now. Jehi is expecting the workshop here to be better than that of the 26th terrarium. All the paths are designed to move the druids to the workshop. Jehi entered the terrarium, but the in-charge told her to return the larger dryads to her artifact to maintain the less crowded place. Jehi came here to cheer up Elder, but it seems to have turned out this way. She told Elder and Meski to return, but Elder became angry and asked questions, and when it came to Jehi seedlings, she became angry too, and they started fighting like children but stopped when others called them lovers and realized how embarrassing it seemed. Meski calms Jehi, said that she would take Edder in, and she said just a few words in his ear, and he came inside quietly. Jehi went into the first shop, which is for potions, and she is looking for a potion that will recover stamina. She asked the man about it, regardless of the price. Jehi is observing the surroundings, where some druids are discussing that they don't have sufficient diamonds and they should back the one and take another potion to utilize the coupon, which might be more cost-effective to purchase the mini potions. Two druids are fighting due to a lack of funds, which seems to be a druid party to Jehi. Meanwhile, the man came back with the special potion that is expensive in the store which provides nutrients to the mother plant. In the meantime, a lady came out of nowhere and told the man that she knew that he had just added a bit of potion to the water. She also told him that the potion was expensive, but they needed to feed a huge amount of it to see the effect, and she preferred to buy traditional supplements from the orchard instead of buying them. Chapter 55 Jehi just got saved from being ripped off as the lady saved her telling her the truth that this supplement one can get from Orchard and caught the lie of the man that the bottle is not a custom made of the alchemy tower as she saw it at another store. 
The lady warned the man that she would blacklist him for spreading false information. They came out of the place. Jay he is thinking of buying new equipment for herself, and she saw her again, who is telling her teammate that he is allowed to buy a pair of boots, but he has to starve tonight, and it doesn't make sense to change equipment for those who always attack from the back. Her teammate asked her to let him eat the hot food here as they have to survive on emergency rations as they leave the terrarium because they use their cash, whatever they earn by completing missions, and there are no more jobs as someone has already cleared the requests here. Jehi understands them as mercenaries who complete missions, but she thought she had completed the quest as well, she would also be called a mercenary. Meanwhile, a lady approached her and, in a slow voice spoke to her. She asked if she was looking for something specific. Jehi told her that she wants equipment that is suitable for her. She recognizes Jehi as the beginner druid and asks her what kind of battles she prefers so that she can suggest equipment accordingly but she says that she has never had any battles, except throwing diamonds from far away. Mostly, druids get into the battle, but it's better to step back if they find themselves not ready. She suggested to Jehi that leather is lighter compared to metal, but it also becomes heavy when the whole equipment is made of it, and she told him that they use cotton and put the leather in the weaker sections so the equipment feels comfortable. Jehi is watching the orange-haired lady who found the gloves that fit perfectly to her while her mate didn't get his size for the boots as the standard size fits him. Jehi asked the shopkeeper if she provided the gloves smaller than the standard size, and she did, as when a beginner druid came to her parents' shop, she started selling equipment for beginners, realizing the need. Jehi appreciates her work, but she said that her parents are not supportive because standard sizes sell more and she rarely gets orders for custom. Hence, her shop will soon merge with her parents' shop, and the sizes will be returned to standard as soon as the stock runs out. Jehi thanked the orange hair lady and asked her if she doesn't mind if she buys her those gloves as she wants to boost the sales of the lady's store, but she is concerned, so she told her that she is the administrator of the 28th terrarium, but the lady has ethics, and she showed her kindness and thanked Jehi for her gratitude but her team doesn't accept anything without working for it. Jehi got the idea to stock these items in her terrarium, as she will give the druids these items when the beginner druids arrive in the terrarium, regardless of the fact that the world tree can't produce berries. She wants to buy all the equipment, so she asked the shop owner, and she told him to talk to the administrator first. The orange-haired lady asked Jehi how she was going to move all the items she purchased to the 28th terrarium, and she hadn't thought of it. She asked Jehi if she needed druids to move these items so they could do this task for her. Her team is going to a higher number of terrariums, so it will be on their route. Jehi asked them if they were passing by the 59th terrarium by any chance, and she told them that they have to go to the 40th terrarium, but they will also visit the 59th terrarium if she gives them some time. Jehi can solve the loop matter also with the help of this team, and she asked them about the process through which they can hire them, which is just to share the details of the mission, including duration, reward. Jehi is feeling like an NPC, as she can give quests like the one who gave her. They went to the cafe, where a man welcomed her and told her that the administrator had already told her about her arrival in advance, as she had purchased a lot from their place, so they set up a special spot for them in the cafe. Jehi told the waiter to take out all the deserts as she was confused, which shocked the team. She asked Jehi if she had many requests, and Jehi wants them to move the items from the 18th terrarium to the 28th terrarium. Then she wants them to move Loop's family from the 59th terrarium to the 28th terrarium. She also needs help fighting a wild elder, and she also needs help recruiting people for her terrarium. She told Jehi that if she has many requests, then she should hire them as the official guild for the 28th terrarium so that they can take all the requests at once. Jehi wonders if it's possible though, and she says that once she hires them as the official guild, she can become the guild master. Plus, the 28th terrarium will be set as the guild place automatically if the administrator becomes the guild master. She told Jehi to look at her wallet, as she unlocked the information about them for her to have a look. Jehi connects to her terrarium network, and Stonehenge is formed, in which she sees that their team has four druids, she is Iris, 
The one with green hair is Zephyr, the black hat is Notos, and the one with a gray outfit is Herma. They all came from the 25th terrarium, and they have been working as a team since they were beginners. Jehi saw in her wallet that they had completed many different quests with a 100% completion rate. Jehi is concerned about the guild, so she asked her dryads through the thoughts conversation, and Red Daisy told her that the previous administrator also operated an official guild. The administrator assistant fulfilled the role of the guild master, who takes care of the missions and the security of the terrarium. Eventually, the administrator dismissed the assistant because he was not able to pay for the guild. To form a guild, Jehi needs to set a location where the guild members can gather and receive the mission. This place is called Stonehenge, but they don't have a place in the 28th terrarium. Jehi suggests using the previous administrator room for guild purposes temporarily. Mesquite told Jehi that she wanted to decide after meeting